All right, and welcome back to another session of Pelotech 101. Today I've got the GMG Trek Prime, and we're gonna go through general cleaning and maintenance. All right, and as we get started right here, just a few different tools that I have laid out. I've got a nice, warm, soapy sponge, got a towel. Uh, I've got some nitrile gloves, uh, so just hand protection is good. We're gonna be working with some grease and some ash, so uh, easier than uh, scrubbing your hands to the bone once you're done, so a pair of gloves. Uh, I've got some stainless steel cleaner here. I uh, got some paper towel, we've got an extra trash bag, uh, have a great scraper, wire brush, scraper on the back side. Uh, we've got the brand new Pellet Head Ash Vault Pro Cordless. So this is a 20 volt DC cordless ash vacuum. Obviously ash vacuums are designed to keep the ash within the vacuum. So uh, it's nice, we don't wanna have ash blown out of, our, uh, out of our vacuum cleaner into our backyard or porch, wherever we have the grill. And it also has uh, flame retardant filters. So uh, if needed and we're sucking up warm ash, it can handle that warm ash. We also have uh, just a nice little piece of cardboard right here. Uh, I like to uh, lay some kind of floor covering down. So as we're putting the grates uh, and as we're putting the grease tray that we're kind of collecting that uh, where we can easily funnel it up, put it in trash bag and discard it. All right. So let's just kind of cover cleaning, general cleaning maintenance on the exterior of the grill. Um, personally, I like to just, uh, as a go-to, use a warm sponge like this to clean the exterior. I find that if I'm doing this every time after I'm done cooking or every other time, that I can really keep this clean with minimal effort. Uh, but generally, I will just use a soft sponge like this. We'll clean the cover. I'll also use it on all of the metal painted surfaces that are on here. A little scrubber on the back side. But uh, yeah, it's good, to, it's good to keep the exterior of the grill clean, looking good. And uh, I obviously have the Trek here in the cart, so same thing. I'm, I'm generally wiping down this front shelf, this side shelf, uh, every other time that I grill. Um, I also have some stainless steel cleaner here, and uh, I have used this in the past, uh, just on the stainless steel uh, parts of the grill. So I usually just put a little bit of on rag, you know, nice little circles, but we can get this shined up, shined up real nice. And especially I like to do a lot of long smokes. So, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll have a little bit of uh, that smoky film, a little bit of the grease film when we're done cooking. So again, uh, stainless steel cleaner can be a nice little addition to a warm soapy cloth and making sure that we have the exterior of the grill looking as good as possible all of the time. We just opened up the lid on the GMG Trek. We're looking right inside of the grill right now. Uh, now I would say that I've probably gone through about 110, 115 pounds of fuel. So uh, I've had a lot of cooks on this thing. It is definitely time for a cleaning. I would say in this period of time uh, with that much fuel, I have noticed two misfires uh, where I had to pull things out. I had to get the excess ash out of the burn pot uh, so I can get proper ignition. So uh, I would say about every 40 pounds of fuel is really when we should be going in here, cleaning out the burn pot, cleaning our grates, baffles, so on and so forth. Uh, and again, that's what we're gonna kind of take care of today. Again, you're kind of seeing it at a, an extreme point. I've had a lot of cooks, lots of long smokes, lots of great food coming off of here. Uh, so first I'm gonna take out the two cooking grates that we have up there, and then I'm gonna take out the, the grease drip tray baffle just below. As you can see, lots of sauces, seasonings, pieces of food, drippings, you know, lots of stuff that's on there. We're gonna get that cleaned off. And then I just got a new GMG foil liner that goes over the top of that grease tray baffle, which is gonna make everything a lot easier uh, as we move forward. So let's get started. Up and out, get my meat probe out of the way. Up and out. Right down on our nice little piece of cardboard. Again, grease drip tray. I like to bring this up at an angle. Keep all of this on there. And get this over to the cardboard. Now that we're inside right here, we can see the fire baffle. So we're gonna pull out this fire baffle as well. Oh, and I do have the adjustment rod connected. So on the right side right here, we're just gonna loosen our adjustment rod and up and out with the baffle. All right, we're gonna take a closer look inside. I'm just gonna make a quick adjustment so you can see that burn pot a little closer. 
we are right inside the firebox here. So as you can see, we've got uh, we've got a fair amount of fly ash sitting here in the burn pot. Yeah, I mean, I would say that there's a good inch and a half, two inches in the fire pot. Lots of little fly ash that's on top of our feed chute right here on either side. And then uh, as I look at the far right side where our grease chute comes down, we have a little bit of grease built up in that channel. Uh, first, let's get this fly ash cleaned up. So I'm gonna grab the ash vault. I love not needing to have to plug in a cord and wrestle with a cord on this thing. So first, we're just gonna suck up the big stuff. That ceramic igniter that's in here, we want to be careful with that. We don't want to be banging our vacuum cleaner hose on it. I'm going to switch on this crevice nozzle right now just so we can get in and around that igniter element. the rest of the ash. So I think we're looking pretty good in there. Our fire pot's nice and clean all the way down to the metal, underneath the igniter and around it. Get nice and careful around that igniter. And uh, just kind of cleaned up the fly ash just a little bit along the sides. I'm just gonna pan over real quick. So again, we have this, uh, this channel right here where our grease drip tray kind of angles down into. And then we'll see a little bit of buildup in here. And it's pretty thick grease type of build up. So I'm gonna grab my paper towel. And we're gonna try to collect some of this out of that, out of that channeling in there. I'm just gonna use my finger to kind of move this sludge. Uh, I suppose a, uh, like a f large flathead screwdriver, or a, you know, flat edge tool of some sort might work very well here. But for right now, I'm just getting excess grease. Again, most of it's going to funnel out that hole and go right into the grease drip bucket uh, down below. But we're just getting out some excess. And as you saw, there's not much, there's not much fly ash that really accumulates in there. I mean, considering the amount of pellets uh, that I have gone through, uh, really a small amount of fly ash in there. So uh, I like, I like efficient, efficient burning fuels. All right, so now we kind of got that out. I'm just gonna pan back a little bit over to my left. And we're gonna look at this thermal sensor right there. So this is where our thermal sensor is located. Again, that is reading interior temperature of the grill. And it's giving signal to our control board to make adjustments both on the fuel feed and on that combustion blower to maintain temperature. And again, I'm careful with this, but I'm just giving it a light little wipe down. We're just cleaning off. You know, so it, I could certainly use my warm soapy cloth as well on here, which I might do. But I would say that we want to use uh, non-abrasive materials when we're cleaning this little thermal sensor right here. There we go, that's looking nice and shiny. All right, let's 
go down on the uh, on the piece of cardboard and uh, let's go through the process of cleaning these grates and the baffle. It's a nice little overhead view. A little piece of cardboard down. Use my brush scraper. And uh, we're just gonna go back and forth on both sides. Clean off the gunk. Everybody's a little different as far as how they clean their grades. Some people do it every single time they cook. Uh, for me, there's just something about leaving all the stuff on there that uh, adds really nice flavor to the food every time you cook it. So I have a tendency to probably not clean mine as often as most people. But just kind of a, a preference thing until they get so built up that you're kind of forced to do that. So pretty clean at this point. You take my, uh, yeah, I'll take my paper towel. And we'll just do a last little wipe down there on the grates. You know, if I wanted to get crazy, we could put this in a, a tub of warm soapy water and we could really scrub these down, get them all right back to stainless steel. But for right now, uh, this is good enough for good enough for me. So we're just gonna set this one to the side. Next to my oregano plant there. And same thing with the other grape. You know, there's lots of different scraping tools that are uh, that are out in the marketplace. Generally, I'm not a big fan of wire brush scrapers. Um, just because you just, you never know when, uh, you know, one of those little bristles is gonna break off and stick to the grates and, you know, potentially be in your food. So anyway, I'm not a huge fan of wire brush scrapers. I'm really only scraping my grates with this once they're out of the grill. Um, but there's lots of different styles of, uh, of scrapers that are out there that you can check out, you know, whatever, whatever works best for you. But you can see now why I have a piece of cardboard down is we certainly don't want that in our backyard or on the concrete, that kind of thing. Our, uh, our fire baffle right here, I mean, that just gets a little bit of fly ash on it. So I'm just literally gonna brush off the fly ash with the paper towel. Really nothing to, uh, lots of fly ash trapped inside, look at that. Aha. So with this new Trek, we have these kind of these fold in inner baffles. Lots of ash that was trapped on the inside right there. All right. That was a new discovery. So as we're pulling out this fire baffle, yeah, let's get all the ash that's kind of trapped within these uh, these angled baffle pieces right there. We're just gonna set that off to the side. And now comes for our grease trip plate. So I'm just using the scraping side of this and old scraper but we're just breaking off the hard stuff Pretty good there. Yeah, there we 
you go. So it's pretty good. Now, I'm gonna show you one of these guys in just a moment. So these are the GMG liners. Just basically set that on top. Uh, you can aim to fold it over a little bit if you want, but it's just kind of designed to sit on top. And then that way, we just literally have to pull out a piece of, uh, of foil instead of scraping this uh, mess here that I created. So we're just gonna set that off to the side for now and get those put back into the grill. I've got uh, the baffles and everything by the grill ready to put back in. Go ahead and clean up the mess. This is where our little trash bag comes in handy. So I'm just literally going to fold up this cardboard. Like so. And place right in the bag. Just like that. All right, we are back by the grill, ready to put all of our baffles and our grates back in there. So we're gonna start off with the fire baffle. So again, just up and in. And I'm gonna reconnect my adjustment rod. Most part, I like to keep mine kind of right in the middle unless uh, I need to direct that fire, depending on what I'm cooking. Uh, but baffle is in. This is our grease drip baffle. Again, I put that in the angle. Always want to have the notched part towards the thermal. Again, sits at an angle down here, just like that. You have some leeway with this, as you can see. Same thing, I usually keep mine in the middle like that. We're going to lay on one of the drip easies. I've played before with kind of wrapping them around the edges and things, but I don't know, I find this way, just kind of setting it over the top, I can just literally take the cooking grates off and roll that thing up and throw it away. So that's pretty slick. Those, uh, those come in a three pack, so. I'll probably leave it on until it gets gunked up enough where it's getting close to touching the grates. <laughs> and uh, again, we're just putting our cooking grates back in there like that. All right, and that wraps up general cleaning and maintenance on the GMG Trek Prime. Davy Crockett's gonna be very similar. GMG's other models are gonna be very similar. But uh, if you have questions or concerns, just leave us a comment below. Uh, we'll have links below to uh, a great grill scraper that we can use. Uh, I'll have a link to that new Ash Vault Cordless Pro DC vacuum. Uh, and I'll have a link to those really sweet GMG foil tray liners. Thanks again for joining us for another session, and we'll see you soon.